You probably know the best time to use term insurance versus permanent. Or do you? Today, on this episode, we're going to break down the differences between term life insurance and permanent life insurance. But before I get started, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to all of our episodes here on our YouTube channel. The big question people always have is, what type of life insurance is most appropriate for me? And my standard answer is, well, it depends. What are you trying to accomplish? Last episode, we broke down the reasons why people need life insurance. Now we want to talk about in episode two, what types of insurance is available to you. Very simply, you have term insurance and we have what's called permanent insurance. Term insurance, in my world, I use the term as simply renting life insurance. 97% of all term insurance policies expire worthless. Only 3% of the claims ever get paid. It's a good investment for the insurance companies because they rarely pay out. But it's a very low cost, inexpensive way to fill the gap in people's needs. The biggest one we talked about in the last episode was mortgage protection. When somebody buys a house and they have a 30 year mortgage, they wanna protect that loan for that surviving significant other or spouse. So they'll buy 10, 20, 30 year term insurance that will evaporate or shrink over time as the mortgage pays itself off. So when I say term insurance is like renting, at the end of the 20 years, you get nothing back. You gave your security deposit and the key and you're out the door. That's renting. Permanent insurance, you actually are building equity or what is viewed as cash value. And let's break down how that's gonna work. Regarding term insurance, 10, 20, 30 years, before I move on to permanent, this is gonna give you a locked in price for that 10, 20, or 30 year period. There's annual renewable term that starts out very low, but it gets very expensive as time goes by. What's most popular is a 10 or 20 year term policy that people will get. So a 30 year old can get very low cost, inexpensive insurance for the 20 years. They've got a family started, they have a couple of kids coming out. They wanna get the kids through college age, get the mortgage paid down, get money built up in their 401ks, build some assets. And by the time they're in their 50s, maybe they don't need that life insurance anymore, and it's okay that it evaporates and it goes away. But then there might be needs where you have permanent insurance. Permanent insurance is something that you can't outlive. It's going to be there for you permanently. Oh, who came up with that word? Permanently. You may know it as whole life, universal life, index universal life. These are all different types of permanent insurance. What happens is this, over time, you have money that is gonna build out and grow in your policy. Well, on day one, if I have a $500,000 permanent policy, there's no cash the day I buy the policy. It's all insurance. But as time goes by, I start building cash value. And as time goes by more and more, there's more of my money in there and there's less and less insurance. And eventually at a certain age, age 100, whole life used to be always designed, at age 100, the policy endowed. Endowed meaning, here's your money, Martha, you won. You made it to 100, you bought a half a million dollar policy, you had all this insurance, now you're 100, you have no more insurance, here's your check for $500,000. That's how permanent insurance was designed. Well, obviously, way back in the day, as I mentioned in previous episodes, life insurance has been around for over 300 years. Nobody was living to 100. I, average age was maybe 50, 60 years of age. Now, in today's world, we've elongated where policies are now going out to 120. You'll see some policies now called guaranteed universal life. So there's all different types of names out there and programs. Again, I don't know what the right mechanism for you is. I wanna give you the basic understandings of term versus permanent. Again, simple literacy in the worlds of life insurance. People don't even understand what term insurance can do for them. Super inexpensive, but again, be careful. If you're a smoker, Rates are gonna be three to five times higher. If you're a diabetic, you could be declined. So you wanna get your life insurance well ahead of your health changes. Now, let me be clear, diabetics can get life insurance. It could be very expensive. If it's unregulated, you're gonna be a decline. 
Unfortunately, I've had to share with clients their diagnoses, meaning they didn't even know they were a diabetic till we tried to get them life insurance. Insurance companies don't want unknown risk. They're not gonna take on that person until they get doctors, treatments, and medications and whatever needed. And guess what? A year later, we did get that client his life insurance, okay? But those are gonna be rated policies. You've got preferred and standard and rated, and again, all kinds of terminology out there you need to familiarize yourself with. Not gonna dive too much deeper into that today. Again, purpose of today was to talk about term insurance, that's like renting, no cash value being accumulated, very low cost to you today, has a structure of maybe 10, 20, 30 years. We've even seen 40 year policies out there now. Those are a little crazier. I'm not sure if that's a good fit for people, but you never know. And so you're gonna use that short term to take care of the certain gaps. And then based upon your needs, we're gonna talk in later episodes of more strategic planning around estate planning, pension planning, premium financing and the like. Those are all gonna be permanent insurance solutions. Stay tuned for those episodes. It'll be episodes three, four, and five as we roll out more information for you. Self-help on the world of life insurance. I'm your host, Bruce Weinstein. It's another episode of Ask to Plan Man. Please like, share, and subscribe. Improve your financial literacy. Until next time, thanks for joining us. We'll see you then.